developed by Fat Shark and released by Paradox Interactive in October 2012, The War of the Roses is an online multiplayer game that puts you into the heart of one of the darkest and bloodiest civil wars England ever experienced. Does this game take the crown, or should it abdicate? Let's find out. War of the Roses depicts the various battles that occurred for the English crown during the 15th century. You fight as one of the great royal houses of the day, the House of York or the House of Lancaster. The story is kept to a bare minimum during the multiplayer gameplay, but there are some nice introductions to the various battles in the offline training mode. In 1464, the influential Earl of Warwick was tasked by Edward IV to capture Bamberg Castle, one of the last remaining Lancastrian strongholds of the realm. For the first time in history, the sound of cannon fire would accompany the storming of a castle on English soil. The offline training mode presents you with the fundamentals of the game. It's wise to do these levels before going online, as the mechanics of the various classes have their own strengths and weaknesses. Better to find out these strengths and weaknesses before you go into battle online, as the online battles can be often brutal and unforgiving to say the least. Once you're familiar with the mechanics of the game, then it's time to head off into battle. There are multiple servers available, so you should have no trouble finding players to, in one of the two main groups, Team Deathmatch and uh, Conquest Mode. These support up to 64 players at a time, so battles can get quite large. familiar with the Mountain Blade series, we were right at home with the control scheme here. The traditional keyboard controls WASD govern the movement of your player, whilst the camera and the melee moves are also mapped to the mouse. There is a surprising amount of depth to this control scheme, as the direction in which you move the mouse dictates the angle of your swing. This also dictates the angle of which you can block. There is also a steep learning curve, but once you've mastered it, War of the Roses offers some of the best one-to-one -one fights available online. I normally take issue to multiplayer games for two reasons. Firstly, the lack of real reward in the game, and secondly, the community which the game generates. War of the Roses offers a lot of customization off of the bat. Uh, this increases with the XP gained from battles. Additionally, further classes can be unlocked as well as the eventual ability to create your own custom classes. The community for the game is similar to that of Mountain Blade in that it's great. There is not a troll infested multiplayer game in this uh, the network, and the community values both teamwork and courtesy. This may go a long way to actually cementing the fact I actually enjoyed myself playing this game, but normally I'm a single player kind of guy. You start off as a humble foot soldier, but once you have earned your spare, so to speak, the following classes are available to you. Crossbowman, Longbowman and Foot Knight. The various abilities of these classes is self-explanatory, and whilst I was playing I oscillated between a Longbowman for the ranged attacks and a Foot Knight if I wanted to get into the thick of the action. All in all I found the gameplay in War of the Roses to be far more satisfying than I imagined. Hours would go by and I barely noticed. Even though, if you're like me, you're going to die a lot, I never felt that I was at the point of giving up. The steep learning curve is a challenge, but once you get accustomed to it and the flow of battle, you really want to stick with it. The only downside I could find is that one of the classes in particular is quite overpowered, that being the Foot Knight. However, this can be addressed through feedback and patching. The graphics within the game are good for the most part. The seven war zones within the game have an expansive area of which to battle, and they are rendered beautifully. Each of the battle arenas has its own unique aura about it. The lighting in the game is great, and if you have the horsepower to play the game on full, the draw distance is quite impressive. Geometry popping is kept to a minimum, utilising the PC to its full potential, although there are some weird looking fade-in effects on the vegetation very similar to Risen 2, although this is not extensive. The individual pieces of armour and livery and the vast array of weapons within the game are extensive and they are beautifully realised. The only thing that lets the side down is some of the character animations and the dodgy looking faces. 
But overall, I love the aesthetic of the game. It really made me feel part of the time period. And for a graduate of medieval history, that's high praise indeed. The music for the game is appropriate and well done, although it's not very memorable. It is also quite minimal during the actual battles itself, and I feel that this is a bit of a missed opportunity. I think the sword play of The Witcher 2, for example, is a good example of how when you're engaged in battle, the music should act, and I feel this game really could have benefited from that. Still, it's, it's clear that there was a lot of time put into the presentation of this game, and I enjoyed it more for it. Now for the bad news. This game doesn't run all that well, if I'm honest. Um, I had real trouble sustaining over 30 frames a second at 1080p with full settings. If I put it down to 720p, then I was hovering more around the 40 and 50 frames a second mark. This is on an i7 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a dedicated gaming card, uh, the 675M from Nvidia with two gigabytes of video memory. I wouldn't therefore probably um, recommend it to those who are using integrated graphics only, simply because I don't think any integrated graphics solution will handle this in a respectful way. Um, even at its lower end um, uh, system preferences. So if you've got maybe an upper mid-range system then you're going to be okay. You'll be able to run it at least 720p with uh, everything on and um, have it at, at least 30 frames per second, maybe a bit more than that. It's a shame really because um, I wasn't expecting this game to be such a resource hog and I think it really does narrow the amount of people who are really going to enjoy it because it does look glorious in its, uh, in its full settings. But still, you know, graphics aren't everything and if you can take a few compromises along the way, it's going to be just the game for you. Um, this isn't the kind of thing I don't think they can actually resolve with patching, it's simply the way the levels are designed. A lot, there isn't much in the way of level of detail popping as I've mentioned, and this comes at a price, at least in terms of processing power that's required to render everything. Anyway, for those of you who are interested, here's how the game looks in low, medium and high settings. All in all, I had a great time with War of the Roses. I enjoyed the um, nice amount of customization there. There was, uh, there were, you, I mean, you can choose your own livery, your own sort of crest and signage that you have on your armor, which was nice. And um, I enjoyed the community. It was really um, nice to come across an online community that didn't treat new members like us with pieces of garbage. Um, that goes a big part of it, giving this game quite a high score as far as I'm concerned. I, I mean I will give it a 4 out of 5. Um, it's not quite a 5 out of 5 um, for a number of reasons. Um, I wish there was a single player campaign like in Mountain Blade. Um, there was also quite a fair amount of technical problems the first day it came out. I couldn't really get online at all um, and that, that bummed me out a bit to be honest. Um, but once I did get in, uh, into the game it was really really good. Um, I'd wholeheartedly recommend it to somebody who had 
decent system. Um, a high-end gaming laptop or a high mid-range laptop will, will just about suffice for this game. I still can't quite fathom whether or not it's um, an optimization issue with in terms of the game's performance. That's, um, I mean, it really does bring it down half a point as far as I'm concerned because um, it was a bloody good time. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and um, it's just such a shame that it didn't run as well as I thought it would. Maybe it's because I'm coming off of Mountain Blade with its 60 frames a second, but um, it was a little disappointing. Um, but all in all, superb gra looking graphics. The battlefields look brilliant and they're very well designed. Very, very, um, you know, it's going to take you a while to learn every nook and cranny and um, know where the kill zones are most likely to be. Um, hopefully they'll do some DLC. Hopefully there'll be some new maps along the line. Um, single player would be nice if they, could, if they could come up with something for that. But the tutorial kind of says it's a single player as you're learning the ropes of the game anyway. It takes you a few through a few custom battles um, that was quite interesting to do anyway it made um, it made the tutorial less tedious shall we say because it, it felt like you were learning something along the way and that's never a bad thing so four out of five for mountain blade um, it, as I say it's it's mate it's not for, it's not gonna be for everyone but for those who get try it and like it you're gonna like it a lot I think um, it's um, it's definitely an addictive game. Be warned. Um, the hours will tick by, and you won't realise where they've gone. Um, so you have you know you have had a warning from me there. Anyway, I'm the laptop gamer, and I'll see you next time.